the defending Division I state champion West Bloomfield Lakers invade Dragon Stadium tonight to take on the Lake Orion Dragons. We've got it all for you here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Corliss. Chris Fritching is off tonight, joined in the broadcast booth by Teddy Rydquist, assistant in the athletic department at Lake Orion High School. Teddy, Lake Orion's got a tall task tonight. They need a win. Kind of hard to do with the defending Division I state champions coming in. A tall task indeed, Doug. Uh, the second of three straight home games for the Dragons, looking to snap that three-game skid, pick up their first OAA red win, and I think one of the keys to the game is this West Bloomfield offense. A lot of firepower, a quick strike offense. Can this Dragon defense force them to string together eight, ten play drives and limit the big play? West Bloomfield comes in. I think it was a shock that they had a change in coaches right after the Division I state final. Uh, Coach Ron Bellamy went to the University of Michigan. Tyrese Geis, who was the defensive coordinator, moves into the head spot. They lost Donovan Edwards, but Dylan Tatum steps right into that running back position, and he's been spectacular. He has been. Edwards followed Ron Bellamy to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And like you said, Tyrese Grice, he has familiarity with the program. Spent the last eight years there as linebackers coach in D.C. So that helps these student athletes adjust to the change, having a man they've been around before. In the OAA red, not much change from last week. Clarkston plays Oxford tonight, who gave Lake Orion a real beatdown last week. Next week is Clarkston and West Bloomfield at West Bloomfield. Neither team can afford to look ahead with, with their games tonight. Certainly not. We know this Dragon team's better than they showed last week, and that Oxford-Clarkston game is at Oxford High School. Don't be surprised if the Wildcats keep that close late. It's always something when the Division I state champions come in. We've seen it where Lake Orion was the Division I state champion moving in tonight. West Bloomfield comes in to take on the Dragons. As the Lake Orion marching band goes into formation, we will pause as director of bands Michael Steele takes the podium to lead, lead the Dragon marching band in our national anthem. Pre-game was underwritten by Malasha's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Malasha's Palace has been serving Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1950s. Give them a call at 
393-2222 or stop by at 3800 South Lapeer Road, Lake Orion. First quarter sponsor is underwritten by Paul's Carpet Shine. The privately owned and operated company provides residential and cleaning services for the Orion area. For more information, give them a call at 248 568 9264 or visit their website at paulscarpetshine.com. Keys to the game tonight for the Dragons keep this potent West Bloomfield offense off the field. Keep Dylan Tatum on the sidelines and sustain drives. Number two, return of the injured. So nice to see Joey Thee, Dan Babcock, and Pat Rowland back in uniform tonight. That's going to be huge. And number three, dominate the lines on both sides of the ball. And relating to that second point there, Ethan Strand, senior linebacker, returns tonight as well as the Dragons kick it away here to begin the night. High end over end kick, taken on the three, up over the 20. 25, he's got a seam. That's number one, Samaj Morgan on the return. Brings it out to the 37 yard line. Andrew Horton made the stop. We'll set the West Bloomfield offense. All you really have to know at the onset is number five, Dylan Tatum at the running back. Well, and number one, Samaj Morgan, that young man that returned that kickoff, you're gonna hear his name quite a bit too. Junior wide receiver, three-star prospect, one of the top in the state, has an offer from Michigan. He's gonna be a big part of this offense. Lake Orion's gonna need to try to keep Samaj Morgan in check. From the gun, high snap, over the head, back to the 20 and dropped at the 19. Number 21, Rick Nance is the quarterback. He's 5'10", and the ball was snapped about six foot seven. Yeah, Nance only a sophomore, nothing he could do about that. And another one of our keys, you have a young quarterback like this, the best thing you can do is hit him early and having him fall on the football and hit him first play of the game. Nice start for this Dragon defense. The Lakers behind the chains. Coach Geis was really, really high on Nance in pregame. From the pistol, motion far side. Toss out far side to number 16, Deontay Pippen Jr. Not much of a gain there. It'll be third down and 29. What a start for the Dragon defense. Third down in the country mile, avoid penalties here and get off the field a three and out to begin the game for this much beleaguered defense would be a great start. Steven Brown is at left cornerback. Andy Horton is at right corner. C.J. Witt and Eric P., your safeties. Back, heading up the middle is Nance. He got the yardage back on the bad snap. It's going to be fourth down and long. Yep. Nance picked up 20 yards, but was still nine yards short. Three and out here. Lakers will punt it away. Stephen Brown back deep, the senior for the Dragons. Number one on your screen. Brown back deep. Stephen Brown transferred in from Grand Blank last school year, state champion in the 100 meter. He has speed. That's an understatement. If he has some room here, could have a special teams touchdown. We've only been able to see his speed in flashes. He gets a punt and is dropped immediately. Number 33, Messiah Spann. On the tackle to drop Stephen Brown. Dragons will take over first and 10 from their own 27, 27 yard line. Kyler Carson's a quarterback. Billy Roberson opens in the backfield. Joey DeBrinicket, the sophomore, number 84, bottom of your screen. First start of the season of his uh, career had, for DeBrinicke. He's De had some flashes. He has caught a touchdown. Kyler under center for the first time this year. 
Gets through the line, he's got an opening. He's over midfield to the 45 yard line. Might have had a whistle on this play. Might not count here. Let's see. They want to have a conference. The line judge comes out to talk with the referee. Our officiating crew is a Macomb County crew. The referee is Nick Myers. Headlinesman is Nick Wallace. Joey Lipinski is the line judge. Zach Ferguson is the umpire. No. Oh, my. Tough break for the Dragons oh there. Oh, my. Inadvertent whistle wipes out a roughly 30-yard gain by Carson. And that is a bane for an officiating crew. They hate inadvertent whistles. Kyler back under center. Haven't seen much of that. Still in a double wing with one wide. C.J. Witt in motion. Up the middle goes Robeson for about two yards. It'll be second down and eight. Let me give you all the numbers on Carson real quick. He started every game this season, 35 of 74, completion percentage of 47, thrown for 518 yards, three touchdowns and two interceptions. But Carson, also the team's second leading rusher, he's very capable of moving the football with his legs. Debrinkit split wide left. Double wing, single back in the backfield. Now motion this side. Kyler on the keeper. Up near the 35. They're going to mark him short. It'll be third and five for the Dragons. This is something we haven't seen yet. And was talking with Coach Powell about that. And he said we had to do something to pick the tempo up. And to get the plays in motion sooner. Well, Coach Mike Powell, I mean, his whole career, he's been a wing T option disciple. This is his type of offense. Kyler on the keeper, and he doesn't go anywhere. He stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Going to set up fourth down and three. It'll be fourth and three, and the punt unit comes out. Zach Stone comes out to kick it away. And I'm trying to see who's dropping... That's Dylan Tatum back there for the Lakers. Look out, number five. That's number six, Corey Garrison, I think. Their numbers are small. High, short kick. Hits, takes a West Bloomfield bounce at the 43 and is downed right there. You're right, that was Donovan Tatum. Or Donovan Tatum. I'm doing it already. I'm just hey, it's a, a, Dylan Tatum a, a, on the return. A natural thought with them being teammates last year, Donovan yeah. Edwards and Dylan Tatum. Donovan Edwards had the first two touchdowns of his collegiate career. He did. In Michigan's win over Northern Illinois. So Tatum will be the lone running back. Nance in a pistol. One wide out split. Wide right, bad snap again. Wow. Tatum falls on it on the 22. They're going to mark him down actually on the 24. Well, the first thing you do is you get your backup center in there and you work with your center on a shotgun snap, which is a very simple thing to do. And what he's doing, he's snapping the ball through his legs. You want to do a shotgun, you snap it and hit yourself in the thigh with your arm. Yep. There we go. They got it on second down and gave us to Tatum. We'll Tatum have a flag outside. Though. Gain of about five. We have a flag holding against West Bloomfield. This one's coming back. And this is not what West Bloomfield wanted. You're taking them out of their comfort zone. So now... It's second down and 28. Like Dragons, Dragons decline. Divide, decline the penalty, move the down box. It is third down 
and 28. And remember, the Lakers had a third and 29 on their first series of the game. And now they're moving. Okay, the ball's marked on the 29-yard line, third and 23. Quarterback keeper, down he goes. Joey Feed, welcome back. He absolutely stoned Rick Nance. Number 16, Ethan Strand in there as well. Down. Stephen Brown will drop deep for the Dragons. How huge was that? Good snap this time. Kind of a line drive kick taken by Brown and he stopped. Right away by number 33, Messiah Spann, who just tackled him last time. I was gonna say, Doug, looked e eerily similar to the first punt return, yeah. Thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion Sports live online all year and I'll finish this read after this play. First and 10 for the Dragons, balls marked on the 40. 6-12 left to go here in the first. Stephen Brown split wide left. Dorian Hill wide right. CJ Witt trying to turn the corner, he won't get there. This is a fast and athletic West Bloomfield defense. Rob Harris on the tackle for the Lakers. It'll bring up second and 11. Absolutely, this Laker Dragons defense are very go, strong against the run. No huddle, they wanna get some speed established. Roberson stays in the backfield, double wing with CJ Witt on one side and Matt Freeman on the other. Freeman comes this side. Handoff up the middle to Roberson. He got about four to the 43, and it'll be third down. Talking to offensive coordinator Mike Powell, and he said that's one thing he felt had been lacking was the speed of execution and the speed of getting plays to develop. So they moved Carson Kyler up under center. Two wideouts. Wit in motion. Kyler back to pass. Got pressure intended for Roberson. He was the only one in the area. And it'll be fourth down. Between the two teams, four drives in this game, four punts. Yeah. But to go back to what you were saying there, Doug, about the offense and the lack of quick developing plays, the last two games, Southfield AT and Oxford, we've seen a lot of Carson in the shotgun, and tonight they're going back to what they did in the first two games of the season. He hadn't been under center all year until tonight. Jones. High short punt again. Take this a time bounce. takes a dragon bounce and goes out about the 13 yard line. They're gonna mark it out on the 11 where West Bloomfield will take over first and 10. Now we'll do our read. Thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School Sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football volleyball and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the LOHS program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. And I'll finish after this play. Nance rolling, got pressure, throws complete, and brought down by Naz Lardell is number 22, Kenneth Jones II. 
So to set up your account, get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. ONTV thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. And with the tempo of this game tonight, we're going to try to get reads in when we can. <laughs> Second down and 11. Another high snap, but he brings it down. Hand off to Tatum. He's up to the 15. They're going to call it the 16, and it'll be third down and five. Nothing fancy. Give it to the guy that runs fast. Dylan Tatum set to announce his commitment next Wednesday, the 29th of September. He's considered a Michigan State lean, but we know the Wolverines have been in the mix as well. So either way, congratulations to him accomplishing a lifelong dream. Third and five here. Third and five for the Lakers. High snap again. Toss out and brought down is number one, Samaj Morgan. C.J. Witt in on the tackle. And again, the high snap throws off the tempo of the play. And by the time he was able to bring the ball down, get it out to Morgan, the Dragons had it diagnosed and brought it down for no gain. West Bloomfield's punter here. I'll see if I can get a jersey number. Standing inside his own five-yard line. Should have favorable field position here for Lake Orion as we hit 240 to play in the first quarter. Stephen Brown back deep. High, nice kick. Waves it off. Takes a sideways bounce. Out of bounds at the West Bloomfield 47 where the Dragons will take over first and ten. Today's game is a copyrighted presentation of Lake Orion High School's Dragon Broadcasting Program and Orion Neighborhood Television. In 2019, the LOHS Broadcast Program was awarded the title of Best Overall Program in the Country. We brought you over 80 live sporting events, and we plan to match that again this year. Plus, you can catch our award-winning daily live newscast, LOAM. Tune in at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. And we have a whistle. Delay a game, it's going to be. A delay call on first down. That'll back the Dragons up to their own 48. So first down and 15 for the Dragons. Kyler, nope. Who did they send up there? That was Kyler yep. on the keeper. Picked up a yard. He sent Roberson up the middle. Matt Wellman came around the far side and Kyler just kept it. So maybe a gain of one at second and 14. Roberson is still the back. Kyler looks, throws, caught by Jack Wellman. And it's going to be third and 11. Seventh catch of the year for Wellman. I like him. He's a good player for this Lake Orion offense. Number four, a senior. I'd look to get him involved as often as possible tonight. Wellman and C.J. Witt. When you've got a fast defense like West Bloomfield has, you've got to get rid of the ball. Certainly, and Wellman excels at those flat routes, those short passes. It could be a nice matchup for him. So third and 11. Kyler rolling. Looking, gonna go long. Joey DeBrinicket. Got he was in a hand battle with number 24, Bryce Rowe, and just got held up enough that the ball sailed over his head. So fourth down and another punt. This game's been played between the 40s. This is one of those drives that I think Mike Powell and John Blackstock will point out when they're watching film is a missed opportunity. You start in plus territory at West Bloomfield's 47 and you don't do anything with it except go one yard backward. Well, 
the delay of game penalty before the drive really even started. Hurt. Yeah. High, again, short punt, takes a Lake Orion bounce down to the 10, and the Lakers will start out first and 10. The first quarter is also underwritten by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area, proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. So the Lakers come out first and ten from their own nine. Twins right, single wide left. Two backs in the backfield. Handoff, Dylan Tatum. He's got a little hole, squirts through, and he's got a first down up at the 20. He doesn't need a lot of room. No, that's what an FBS running back looks like. Keeps those legs moving. It takes at least two dragons to bring him down, and he moves the chains there. 49 seconds to play in the first quarter. Number one, Samaj Morgan split wide left. Another high snap. Tatum with the ball. He's going to get a couple. Yep. They're going to give him three as the first quarter winds to an end. Yeah, moderate gain there, but nice job by Rick Nance just to corral that snap and get the handoff. Well, they're going to try to get another playoff. Wind is not a factor tonight. Number 66, Dalen Henry is the center. Dylan Tatum on the carry. He's got a head of speed, breaks a couple tackles, still moving his feet over the 40 to the 42. This just in, he's a pretty good back. <laughs> Breaking news, yeah. First quarter comes to an end. No score between the Lake Orion Dragons and the West Bloomfield Lakers. The scoreboard for the first half is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union. The full service financial institution serves everyone who works, worships, or attend school in Michigan. Give them a call at 248-814-4000 or visit their website at michiganunitedcu.org for more information. And replays for today's game are underwritten by Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. So not a lot of ball movement just by the punters. Yep, just by the punters. What West Bloomfield's putting together right here has been our best drive of the game so far. Started on their own nine, and they're out to the 42. Dylan Tatum again, up over the 45. And they're going to call him down about the 46. It'll bring second down and six. Scoreboard's calling five, but as I count, I see six. Twins right, single wide left, backs in an offset eye. Nance in a pistol. Handoff around the right side. He's got a break and he's got an opening. Number 22, Kenneth Jones, the second, picks up the first down for the Lakers. If everyone's going to key on number five, give it to the other guy. Yeah, Kenneth Jones, the third, he's a, he's a junior, pretty good tailback in his own right, would get a lot more run on most teams, but playing behind Dylan Tatum has to make the most of what he gets, and he's doing that right here. He stays in at the running back position. Tries to make a cut and goes nowhere. Nasir Lardell in there again for the Dragons. Nasir Lardell, Kevin McIntyre, Alec Fisher in on the tackle for the Dragons. Second and 10, they're giving him no gain. And Tatum checks back into the backfield. Tatum. 
trapped in the backfield for a loss. Joey Thede. Joey Thede, again. Thede missed the game last week against Oxford. He was in the concussion protocol, cleared to play tonight, and you see what a difference he makes. He's a leader by example for this defense. A senior, number 13, Joey Thede. And you better believe it just tore him apart it not did. to be out there the la last week. Tatum goes out in a slot right. Now comes back this way. Nance looking, throwing. Overthrows the receiver. Samaj Morgan was the intended Samaj target. Samaj Morgan who's looking for a penalty and he's not going to get it. Just good coverage by the Dragon defense. Fourth down and 12. Looks like we'll have another punt here. We will have another punt. You know, at this point in the field, at the Lake Orion 39-yard line, I thought West Bloomfield might just keep the offense out there and go for it, but it looks like they're going to punt it away. Number three, Michael Williams is the punter. Stephen Brown back deep for the Dragons. High kick, Brown took it and was taken down immediately. That had the looks that he may have been better served to let it go. Absolutely, well, great point, Doug. I was gonna say, doing some coaching from the booth up here. When it's over your head and you're inside the 10 yard line or the five yard line, let it go and take your chances of a touchback because now your offense is starting from the five, has to go 95 yards. So first and 10 from the five, 942 to go in the half, no score. Kyler right up the middle. Goes for about two, maybe three. I think that was just to buy the offense some breathing room right there. Pick up two, three exactly. yards. Exactly. Yeah. You've got a very active defense from you across the line. Gave him three. It'll be second and seven. Kyler looks it over. Double wide, double wing. Number four, Jack Wellman tries to cut it up the middle. He doesn't go far. He's stopped by number eight, Kyle Johnson. Looks like that was 22, C.J. Witt, actually. Up C.J. Witt, correct. You know, after a while, these teams got to make their numbers bigger for right. us up here. We're all kind of a long way away up here, and the lights are just starting to take effect. Witt and Wellman are very similar players, though. Witt, I would say, is a little bit bigger, but they do a lot of the same things. They can take that inside handoff and catch a short pass. Handoff, C.J. Witt up to the 10. Dragons went that time with two backs in the backfield, Roberson and Witt, and it's going to be fourth and five, and we're going to have another punt. So this all ends up being a battle of who's going to punt from the worst field position. And right now, that battle's in West Bloomfield's favor because Zach Jones will punt it away, stand it on the A in the north end zone here. Yeah. So Dylan Tatum back deep and a bad punt off the side of his foot. And it may have been tipped. I think Michael Williams, number three, may have got a piece of it. They're gonna mark it down at the 23 yard line. And Lake Orion was at the 10, a net of only 13 yards. And the Dragons are gonna have their back to the wall. First and 10, we'll set the Dragon defense. Number 92, Judah Kinney, who's played very well the last couple weeks, is at the nose. Number 55, Trevor Witt, is at one of the end spots. I agree about Judah Kinney. He played really well against Oxford last week. Six tackles, two for loss, we have, a sack. We're gonna have delay a game 
against West Bloomfield. This is odd to see it on a first down situation. It's happened once to each team now, and that helps the Dragons' cause. We'll yeah. back them up to the 29-yard line. Still good field position for the Lakers. Trips right. Toss up the middle. Caught and brought down quickly by, is that Pat Rowland? Ethan Strand, nope, number Ethan 16. Ethan Strand, welcome back. It is second and 11. Now it's trips left, single wide right, single back in the backfield. Keeper by Nance, and he's dropped by Nas Lardell. Lardell's had a nice night tonight. And a great tackle. And you know, entering this season, a lot of people thought Lardell would be one of this team, one of this Lake Orient's team's better tailbacks, but he's ended up being needed more on defense than offense, and he's answered that challenge. He's played very well from that linebacker position. So third down and 11, 6.30 to go in the half, no score. From a pistol, Nance, rolling, looking, throwing. Caught for a touchdown. Kenneth by Jones, the number third. 22, Kenneth Jones. And he had a dragon defender right in his face. I had to look to see if the ball was intercepted or caught. Very nice play by Jones III, running back, making a catch out of the backfield, and that was all hands, too. Reached out and snatched it, didn't catch it with his body. Nice play, 6-0 West Bloomfield. And as we stated, he had a Dragon defender right in front of him with his arms up. Yeah, I think that Great might have been Andrew Horton. Ball is down, kick is up, kick is good. Justin Ward, a 5'10 freshman. Freshman. 5'10 freshman. Class of 2025. I had to look at that year. They don't put down fresh, you know, sophomore, junior, senior. They have it by graduation year, and I had to look at 2025. Well, Doug, we have our first drive of this game that wasn't a punt. Unfortunately, it was a touchdown for the Lakers. Let's see if this Dragon offense can answer right back. And we'll let you know that DVD copies can be purchased by calling Orion Neighborhood Television at 248-393-1060. For only $10, you can get a copy of not only this game, but any game or program in our broadcast vault. DVD copies, 248-393-1060. Six zero. Stephen Brown and Dorian Hill back deep for the Dragons. And both of those guys, Jack Wellman back there as well, all three of them, but especially Brown and Hill. They have the speed to take the distance. Hopefully this kick falls short of the end zone and they get a chance. Uh, you know, Stephen Brown does have world-class speed, but he just hasn't had the opportunity to exhibit it. Exactly, exactly. And so the left-footed kicker, got to love left-footed kickers, puts his foot into it. It'll be Taken Wellman. by Wellman on the five, up to the 15, 20. Stutter steps a little bit, taken down on the 24, where it'll be first and 10 for the Dragons. So now the Dragons have to answer with the score Answer a score with a score. And at the very least, pick up two first downs or something on this drive. Just put a little bit of a drive together. Get some confidence, a moral victory. Because we have not seen much from this offense tonight. It's been four punts. That's one of the things we said in the pregame. Sustain your drives. Sustain your drives. It all goes back to our keys to the game. Double wing up the middle is Robeson. He stopped for no gain. Billy Roberson, number 17, only a sophomore. Team's leading rusher entering play tonight, 221 yards. But 153 of those came in the season opener yeah. against Utica Eisenhower. He's been quiet the last few weeks. 
Avante Walker on the tackle for West Bloomfield brings up second and 10. Fumble. Oh boy. Kyler and CJ Witt. CJ Witt ran into each other. And that is one of the things they haven't run under center all year. And it's all a timing issue. And right now, Kyler was coming back as CJ was coming across, and they just met five yards back. So it's third down and 18 for the Dragons. Kyler, back to throw, got a rush. Off the back of Billy Roberson. He wasn't even turned around Incomplete and ready for it. Incomplete intended for Roberson. And that'll bring up fourth down in another punting situation for the Dragons. Well, Doug, as you were talking about with, you know, this team not being used to under center, it's a big change going from the shotgun to under center. And running it in practice is one thing. You think you have it down. It's a whole nother thing on Friday nights in a game setting. Samaj Morgan and Dylan Tatum are back deep for the Lakers. And we've got a flag. False start. I think they're going to call a procedure call against the Dragons. That'll back them up five. It was on Joe Bruno. So again, Jones has got a kick out of his end zone. Standing in almost the same exact spot as the last one. Had a rush, got it up, high, short punt. Takes a Lake Orion bounce over midfield down to the 46 or 47 yard line. They're gonna mark it to 46. That's a very nice punt by Zach Jones very right there. Very nice. Yeah. A bounce is the punter's best friend. Right. So the Lakers take over first and 10 from their own 46, 438 to go here in the second. No Tatum out there, it'll be Kenneth Jones the third. They got Samaj Morgan in the backfield Samaj now. Samaj Morgan in motion. Nance rolling, got pressure, throws complete. And that was Morgan. To number one, Najat. Sanaj Morgan and we have an injury on the field looks like it's 54 Alec Fisher for Lake Orion it is indeed yeah, Alec, Fisher. Alec Fisher it's a rather pleasant night tonight the temperature's probably in the low 60s mid 60s we mentioned not a lot of wind. The flag is furling a little bit in the north end zone. Now, picturesque fall night here, and not, certainly much better in the rain filled last couple of days. And, you know, as you see on the screen right now, you see John Blackstock out there, you know, tending to Alec Fisher. That's one thing about Coach John Blackstock. He really cares about these young men. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, you always care for the welfare. I mean, we we do these games and we call them, but we always have to keep in mind that these are 15, 16, 17-year-old football players. They're not getting any money for this. No. They they don't have to worry about name, in, image, and likeness. They're out here because they love football and they love their school. And speaking of which, we've said it before, we'll say it again, is there any better view in Oakland County than what we have right here at Lake Orion? If there is, I can't name one. This is as good as it gets. In a couple weeks, the leaves will begin to turn and it will be absolutely spectacular up here. While they tend to the injured player, we will take a quick break. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here 
on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. We'll be right back. Injured player has helped off the field, number 54, Alec Fisher, coming off under his own power, which is always good to see. One thing about high school football these days, the, tr the medical training and the medical training staff that is at every game is just Talk about a dedicated set of professionals. And Lake Orion has one that's as good as it gets. Chelsea Hanning, yeah. 2003 Dragon graduate. So second down and one for West Bloomfield. Handoff up the middle. First down to Dylan Tatum. It'll be first and 10 for the Lakers. And Dylan Tatum, as effective as we've seen him running the football tonight, he's being recruited collegiately to play defensive back. And running back isn't even his primary position at the next level. So from the offset eye, a delay, and Nance takes it up the middle. He carried two pretty good fakes off and just held on to it and carried it up the middle. They're going to mark him down at the 37-yard line. It'll be second and six. Twins left, single wide right. Back still in an offset eye. Handoff, Tatum. Close to, if not a, they're going to mark him down about a yard short of the first. And I sit corrected. That was number 22, Kenneth Jones the third. And Judah Kinney, and then that's uh, number 92 for the yep. Dragons. So third and one, West Bloomfield going hurry up. Motion this side, Nance on the keeper, he's not gonna get there. Kevin McIntyre. <laughs> Ethan Strand. Kevin McIntyre and others. So now it's fourth and three from the 34. And this is that no man's land. You're almost too far away to try a field goal, but too close to punt. So you might as well go for it. Yep, and that's what the Lakers are going to do here. Down to nine on the play clock. And we have a stoppage in play, and West Bloomfield is going to call a timeout. Hey, filmmakers, be ready. The Wildwood Film Festival will be kicking off on Thursday, October 7th, at the Orion Neighborhood Television Studio, located at 1349 Joslin Road. Teams will be given the requirements, which include a prop, location, and line of dialogue that is to be included in their film. You will have until 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 12th, to submit the film. On Wednesday, the 13th, the films will be viewed and judged at 7 p.m. at the Oxford 7 Cinema in Oxford. Open to all ages, it costs $25 per team to enter, and there will be three winners chosen, and we'll finish it. Nance, throwing deep. 
incomplete. Broken up back there by number three, Eric, Eric Pay. And it looked like Samaj Morgan may have had a chance at that. But it looks like he had it in his hand. That, that corner of the end zone is not really well lit. Nope, and he so ended we up. we almost have to wait for our replay to see what's coming up. Morgan ended up taking a fall into the, the long jump pit there, used in track and field, the long jump sand. But a big stop for this Dragon defense. Only seven points allowed tonight. They're having a nice night. Two minutes to go in the first half. Dragons take over first and 10 from the 34. Billy Roberson is a late addition to the offense. He sets behind Carler. Kyler. Roberson gets the carry, gets maybe two to finish our read on the film festival. The contest benefits the Lake Orion High School student offering support program. To register, go to www.orientontv or call 248-393-1060. Second and eight. Tyler back, looks, going deep. Got Stephen Brown, he's got it. Off his hands. Oh, off his hands. He had to stop and turn around and come back. And he actually had to contort his body toward the sideline, just went off his hands. So it's third and eight for the Dragons. Third down and eight. I wonder how aggressive Lake Orion will be here. The Dragons will receive the second half kickoff. Maybe they'll just run it here and see if West Bloomfield burns a timeout to stop well, the still clock. still got a minute 26 left. They've got to come up with an answer for this very fast, very physical West Bloomfield front four. Yes. And we're going to timeout Lake Orion here. Yep, Lake Orion's going to take a timeout. And did you know that Orion Neighborhood Television has its very own internet radio station? You can create your own podcast or radio show or sign up to become a DJ. For more information on the radio station, give us a call at 248-393-1060. So going back to our keys to the game, it was keep West Bloomfield's offense off the field yep. and they haven't been able to sustain enough drives to do that right they're, they're doing a, about a halfway good job because I think if you told any Lake Orion coach here West Bloomfield will have seven points at halftime they'll be like I'll take that deal. absolutely no question so it's third and eight fakes a handoff and that went nowhere. That went to Jack Wellman. He was trapped behind the line of scrimmage and dropped for a loss. And just like we predicted, West Bloomfield yep. does take a timeout. Yep, West Bloomfield takes their second timeout with 116 left to go. It is fourth and 12. To get back to our other key of the game, trying to sustain drives. I think for Lake Orion in the second half, the answer might be embracing the passing game a little bit more. You're going to have a hard time running to the edge on this West Bloomfield defense just because of the speed. Try to throw in right behind that front four, you know, get, to, get the linebackers out in coverage. Talking with offensive coordinator Mike Powell, he said last week against Oxford, they threw the ball like 46, 47 times. They did. That is not his game plan. Not, not at all. But when you get behind, that's what you've got to do. They were chasing the whole game, man. Yeah. And so Zach Jones, again, back to punt. Donna, or Donna, I did it again. Dylan Tatum, back deep. High, short kick. Down immediately at the 30 or 44 yard line. 
by Eric Pay. 69 seconds for West Bloomfield to work with. A minute nine in one timeout, starting at their own 43. As you alluded to earlier, Teddy, that the Dragons will get the second half kickoff. And really, you need to score. You do. You gotta score. Agreed. So twins left, single wide right, single back in the backfield. Again, a high snap. Nance got pressure. Joey Thede's after him. Let's it go. Caught in for the touchdown. Wow. Ethan Strand is going to get flagged for roughing the passer here. He delivered quite a hit on Nance, but it's a touchdown. And That was completed to number 10, DeAndre Hill. And he just won that with speed. The result of the play is the touchdown. Roughing the passer, defense number 16. Yeah, Ethan Strand has got to keep his emotions in check. He does. It was, a, it was a clean hit. It, he wasn't headhunting or anything, but it was late. I feared the flag would come out, and it did. And, you know, Ethan Strand, he's a he's an emotional, physical player. You just got to keep it, you know, controlled chaos. You can't let it get away from you. What a pass by Rick Nance, though. No question. So Justin... Ball is down, kick is up, kick is good by Justin Ward. He might get more kicker. 59.1 seconds to go. We might get a roughing the kicker here, which could be enforced in the kickoff, I believe. The Dragons have got to keep their emotions in check. You're going to have a 15 yard penalty assessed on the kickoff. Now if you Stephen Brown. They are going to kick off from midfield. <laughs> probably from or even the plus 45. Probably the 30 yard line. Because you've got two 15 yard penalties. So 15 would make it the 45. That would be kicking off from the 30. Which for me would be something I haven't seen before. Which would mean try an onside kick. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you got to lose? No, absolutely. But we had instances of this two weeks ago. Ethan Strand was lost last week. Now you have two personal fouls, and to give the kicker credit, I didn't think that he was rough that bad, but he acted. Yeah, he, yeah. he should win an Oscar for what he did out there. That's what they teach you at kicking camps. That's you got to sell I, it. I always told kickers, you go down like you've been chopped down with an ax. And, and you called it, Doug. This is going to be an onside kick here because you have nothing to lose. Timeout, Dragons. So the Dragons will take a timeout with 59.1 seconds. And you can go mobile with Ori Neighborhood Television anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and your mobile devices. Connect with ONTV to see what's happening in our studio, see upcoming events, and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand. ONTV, working to bring Lake Ori into the world. So 59.1 seconds to go. The Lakers have the ball teed up on the Lake Ori in 30. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to try an onside kick. It did not go 10 yards. Now it did. Now it did. And I think West Bloomfield got it back. No signal yet from the officials. Let's see. West Bloomfield players all saying they have yep, it and they West do. Bloomfield's oh, got no. It back. 
Well, they had to wait till it went 10 yards and the West Bloomfield kickoff team sat there. Yep, just hurt. got to the mark and stood there and waited for the ball to cross the 20 yard line and then fell on it. Yeah, perfect execution by the Lakers. They it was. Using their heads, knew they could not touch it before that point, and as soon as it became live, they were on it. So Nance brings them out. They have twins left, single wide right, single back in the backfield. Tight end. Nance, back, looking, throwing, too high, and too high for number one, Samaj Morgan. And Morgan was open too. It was just uh, he, he just, just a sailed a, it. Yeah. Just ran a slant. That makes takes it down to 52.5 seconds. It's second and ten. And I know that onside kick had to bother Coach Blackstock, the old special teams coach. It was the same thing when you see the ball go over that 10 yard mark, fall on it. Yep. Nance, back to throw, looking. And down he goes. Joey Thede. Joey Thede again. Followed up by Evan Rawlings. West Bloomfield's going to take their third and final timeout. It is going to be third and long, third and 14 from the 24. And this third and 14 play is, you, you figure it's most likely going to be a pass. If Lake Orion can force an incompletion, this is a 41 yard field goal from this point, no guinea. Right. And as we talked earlier, it's in that no man's land. That, right. You know, it's, it's too far sometimes, although the kicker looked like, I saw him in pregame, he's got a really good leg, the freshman kicker. Second week in a row, Lake Orion's faced a really nice kicker. Jay Cady, Oxford's kicker, yes. has a boot too. So third down and 14. Third and 14. Dylan Tatum is the tailback. Nance is the quarterback. Number two. Nance, back, looks, throws. Out of bounds, it'll be fourth down. Now Coach Geis has a decision to make. And it looks like that decision is the field goal unit. Fourth and 14. Yep. Justin Ward comes out to attempt a 41 yard field goal. Number 23, Adrian Epps, is the holder. Ball is down, kick is up. Short. And short. A win for that Dragon defense. It is a win for the defense to start off where they did and not give up anything is a boost for that Dragon D. They've played well tonight, they have. The, the defense has played well, the offense is the one that you're searching for answers right now. So, 34.5 seconds. Wing set up, single back in the backfield is Robeson. Robeson. Breaks it outside over midfield into West Bloomfield territory. Brought down by number nine, B.J. Rankin. 28 Good seconds run, to play. First down, Dragons. One timeout left for Lake Orion. You know the speed's there. All he needed to do was get outside and give credit to that offensive line for sealing off the end. Tyler looks, throws, caught. 
caught by Dorian Hill. And he was brought down inbound, so Lake Orion will have yeah. to use their final timeout. Coach Blackstock immediately called time. 21.8 seconds to go. So the Dragons will talk it over. You know, that's one of those plays right there, that completion to Hill. You picked up one yard and used about six seconds. Then had to use your final timeout. It just does the risk worth the reward right there. You've got enough time that you can work the sidelines. Yes. And now you're going to have to without a timeout unless you can get up there and spike it. Now you've got to get the first down. You... So you'll work the sidelines if because the clock will stop on a first down while mm -hmm. they reset the chains. Well, one of the beauties of high school and college football is the clock stopping on first downs. Well, all these things go through a coach's and a coordinator's mind. It's called game presence. Kyler looks, throws, just overthrew number four, Jack Wellman. He had he had separation, just couldn't get underneath it. One step too far. So now it's third and nine with 16.8 seconds to go. You're a dragon receiver. You get the ball and get out of bounds as soon as you can. Double wing set up. Robeson's the lone back. Kyler looks, throws. Nearly intercepted. In, incomplete. He, the ball was intended for Jack Wellman. Penalty flag is down. And he threw into triple coverage. Are they gonna call pass interference? The Lake Orion offensive line's reacting like they are. Yeah. What a bailout this would be, yeah. Well, that's it, you know, you throw it into a crowd, hope somebody gets their hand over the top. All right, that's it. Automatic first down. Wasn't pass it'll, interference, but we'll take no, that too. It'll spot the ball on the 36 yard line. It eats, it eats some clock off. There's 11.4 seconds to go. Now Carson in the shotgun. Carson dropped back, looks, throws. Nobody home, intended for CJ Witt. 7.6 seconds left. And from here, this is a 53-yard field goal. That's out of Jacob Lee's range, I think. I mean, Tyler uh, got nailed pretty good on that one after he let it go. You have Dylan Tatum back playing center field for West Bloomfield. From the gun, Robeson's alongside him. Low snap, picks it up, throws over the middle, incomplete, intended for Stephen Brown. 3.6 seconds to go. It's going to be third and 10. Give me final play of the first half. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> we've, we've seen him. So C.J. Witt and Jack Wellman are the wings. Dorian Hill is split wide left. Billy Robeson's the lone back in the backfield alongside Kyler. Kyler drops, looks, throws toward the end zone. Stephen Brown out of bounds and the half ends. A very entertaining first half of football. Well, the West Bloomfield Lakers lead the Lake Orion Dragons 14 to nothing. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. 
The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. I'm Doug Corliss with Teddy Radcliffe next to me, taking the place, but not replacing Chris Pritching. Halftime was sponsored by Malasha's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, located at 3800 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Malasha's Palace has been serving Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1950s. Give them a call at 248-393-2222. And also, halftime and the third quarter will be underwritten by Paul's Carpet Shine. The privately owned and operated company provides residential and cleaning services for the Orion area. For more information, give them a call at 248-568-9264 or visit their website at paulscarpetshine.com. And we would be remiss. The reason for my broadcast partner's absence tonight is tonight is Vicki Frishing's birthday. So Vicki, on behalf of all of us here on the production tonight, wish you a happy birthday and hope Chris took good care of you and cooked tonight. Anyhow, we have a second half of football. The Dragons will get the ball to start the second half. And what do you see in the way of halftime adjustments being made? I'd like to second that. Happy birthday to Vicky. And in terms of halftime adjustments, yeah, the offense is the area that needs the most adjusting right now. Just 56 yards in the first half for Lake Orion. That's not going to cut it. And the adjustment I would like to see made is, like I was saying to you in the second quarter, Doug, go more with the short passing game. I would lessen the attempts to try to run the football up the middle and get the edge. I would try to attack through the air more in the short passing game. Yeah, they got to do something to slow down that West Bloomfield pass rush because Kyler's had two or three guys around him every time he drops back. And for the defense in that first half, 14 points, they played well. And especially after we saw that onside kick from the plus 30 recovered, they held West Bloomfield to a 41-yard field goal attempt and yep. ultimately no points. Yep. If there is a moral victory, that was one of them. Yes. So, the Dragons will get the second half kickoff. Stephen Brown, Jack Wellman, Dorian Hill dropping deep. And Stephen Brown is more of an up back. I don't think they're looking for a long kickoff. So let's see what the Dragons can put together starting the second half. Number 85, Justin Ward will kick off. Oh, that's number that's number 94, Ryan Krauthammer kicking off. For West Bloomfield. Whistle blown. High short kick. Taken with a full steady, full head of steam by Dorian Gray. He's up over the 30 to about the 33, 34 yard line. We hear coaches talk about what they, oh, got a late flag coming in here. We'll check the flag out.
Referee Nick Myers will tell us. Chase Whitaker, that's the third personal foul we've had in about a quarter of action. That's and right. it's got to get cleaned up. It, un unacceptable, especially for a senior, Chase Whitaker. You know, you're supposed to be an example for the younger guys in this program. You need to know better. And you're putting your team behind the eight ball here in a game where you're trailing by two scores. So tight formation for the Dragons. C.J. Witt is the back in the backfield behind Kyler as they bring a, oh, we're gonna have another conference. And now the line judge goes back in position. First and 10, single wide right. And now the side judge is gonna come in and have a conversation. Let's see if we get another announcement here. Okay, now that they have down in distance, it's first and 10. They have not adjusted the sticks yet. Now they are. Yeah, and now they have it right. It, it should have been first and 10. It just backs the football yeah. up 15 yards, yes. So first and 10, handoff, up the middle, got running room over midfield. Down to the 40, the 30, goes Billy Robeson. What a run on first down. Biggest play of the night for this Dragon offense. And that's how you answer a quick defense, a quick hitter. Just give him a seam. So first and 10 from the West Bloomfield, 34. And... The Dragons are going to get five more. Encroachment. Encroachment by the defense. That'll move it up, make it first and five. And we've talked before at first, first down and five or second and short, it opens your playbook all the way up. Exactly. Chance to take a shot to the end zone here. Dorian Hill splits right. C.J. Witt on a wing left. Two backs in the backfield. Witt in motion. Handoff, Robeson. He's got close to another first down. Going to be about a half a yard short. It'll be second and one. Like to see a little play action, get Carson out on a bootleg and either keep it himself or you know, go to the, the wide side of the field here. A lot of room to work with at the bottom of your screen. So second and one. Robeson probing. Oh, that was Stephen Brown on the carry. He's got the first down at the 20 yard line. They're going to call it the 21. So first down, Brown and Robeson are together in the backfield. Talk about a thunder and lightning. I like that combination. Kyler on the keeper, turns the corner, gets it upfield, gets out of bounds near the 10, see where they mark it. They're gonna mark it on the 12. So it'll be second and two. Good ball movement by the Dragons so far in this drive. Two backs in the backfield, Kyler. On a handoff to Robeson, he got the first down at the 10. It'll be first and 10 for the Dragons. It will be first and goal. 
Give him a gain of two. So first and goal from the 10. Could be Joey DeBrinicket territory right here at the top of the formation. Handoff, Robeson, oh, Stephen Brown on the carry, got maybe three. They're gonna give him two, it's second and goal from the eight. Dorian Hill splits wide left, CJ Witts slot left. To bring it on a wing right. Toss back, Stephen Brown near the five. It'll be third down. So this is a huge third down for the Dragons. It's third and goal from the seven. Stephen Brown's gonna come in Set up in the backfield with Robeson. Debrinket sets up on a wing right. C.J. Witt, wing left. Kyler rolling, looking, going to run it. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. Kyler Carson got it in and took a shot as he crossed the goal line but held on for the touchdown. Seven yards out, fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Kyler Carson, and the Dragons are on the board, 8.46 to play in the third quarter. So number 15, Jake Lee, comes in for the extra point. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 8.46 to go. Here in the third, it's now 14-7, West Bloomfield. Hey, be sure to tune in to replays of your favorite games right here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week. So check our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also visit our YouTube link for games on demand, www.orionontv.org. And no matter where you're listening or watching us tonight, in the entire world on the World Wide Web. Welcome to our broadcast. I'm Doug, he's Teddy next to me, and we're gonna get a heck of a football game here in the second half. Jake Lee's got it teed up. End over end kick taken on about the 14. Brought right up the middle. Dylan Tatum brings it out near the 45. Jack Wellman shoves him out of bounds. It'll be first and 10. West Bloomfield from their own 45 yard line. 8.38 to go here in the third. We hear coaches talk about what they call those swing eight minutes. The last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half. West Bloomfield had a touchdown at the end of the first half. Lake Orion, excellent job answering back here, first drive of the second half. Twins right, single wide left, high snap again. The Dragons got it. Joey Thee, Joey Thee, fell on the ball. They have got to work with their center on a shotgun snap. I don't know if this is the regular center, but he's been putting the ball over 
Third time it's happened tonight. Over Nance's head all night long. Yeah, Dallin Henry is the center, the junior center for West Bloomfield, but we can't overstate Joey Theed, just an absolute playmaker for this Dragon defense. Dragons have the ball first and 10 from the 27. Dorian Hill split right, two backs in the backfield. C.J. Witt on the carry around right end. Got a first down and is being pushed out after he picks up the first down, I believe. Oh, they've got him marked out of bounds about a yard short. Good hard run, C.J. Witt. So it's going to be second down and they're calling it two. As we pass the eight minute mark. Double wing, single back. Kyler drops the ball and falls on it. That's all right, you're still in third down and three here. And number 57, Avante Walker fell on Carson. So it's third and three. Kyler goes back under center. Motion this side. Handoff up the middle. Robeson, first down Dragons. Inside the 15 at the 13. Billy Roberson showing some power, lowered the shoulder there. Nice run by the sophomore. And that's great because you not only have, you can pick up another first down inside the five. Right, you don't have to go the full 10 yards in a goal to go situation. First and 10, Dorian Hill splits right this time. Great play fakes, Roverson up the middle for a couple. It'll be second down. So second and 10. Raymond Payne is on a wing left. Up the middle goes Roverson again. He's inside the five, close to a first down, about a yard short. It'll be third down and one. And we have a West Bloomfield player down on about the eight yard line. That's number 53, Ryan Ross. He's gonna come out for a play. Steady dose of Billy Roberson. They're right in the hot hand. Third down and two for a first. Third down and four for a touchdown. Tyler hands off Roberson in the end zone. Touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. Sheer power got that one in. Four yard touchdown run. Billy Roberson's second touchdown of the season. And the Dragons are within an extra point of tying it up. Jake Lee on to attempt the extra point. Falls down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 5.33 to go here in the third. We're tied at 14. How great is this? Larry Buss and the crew at Jets Pizza, located at 1091 South Lapeer Road, have been a proud supporter of Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Athletics since 2009. 
Jets supplies catering for cast and crew. Thank you, Larry, for your continued support. Give them a call. It's kind of late for dinner now, but give them a call at 248-814-7559. Great Dragons Drive helped in part, and I hate to, you know, these kids are out there trying their best, and we do our best not to criticize, but somebody's got to teach that center how to do a, sh a shotgun snap. Agreed. It's a, it's a huge factor in this game right now. It's happened three times already. The last time leading to that Joey Thede fumble recovery and a touchdown by Billy Roberson. Yeah. What a difference less than six and a half minutes makes. Zach Jones kicks it off. Short kick taken on about the nine. Got an opening is Morgan. Still on his feet. Still on his feet over midfield heading down the left sideline and brought down finally and a late flag comes in. I don't know if they're gonna call a block in the back flag came out in a weird spot. It came in on the other side yeah, of the field. He was heading down the left sideline and the flag came over from the side judge on the right sideline. So let's see what they call. He brought it down to about the 20. If it is holding or a block in the back, that will be a spot foul. Yep, be huge for Lake Orion. Hopefully that is the case. Let's see what referee Nick Meyer says. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Dragons, and that is their fourth one tonight. And Coach Blackstock is running down saying, what happened? Microphone, the referee either didn't turn his microphone on or it's not working because we didn't get a number who it was no, on. No, we did not. But the Lakers now inside the 10 yard line. So first and 10 now from the eight. Hand off. Tatum. Dylan Tatum, touchdown for West Bloomfield. Eight yards in one play. And he had a hole up the middle you could have driven a truck through. And whoever that foul was on, you know, learn a lesson from it, young man. Yep, two unsportsmanlike con conduct penalties. We've had four tonight on the Dragons. Yep. High snap, ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good, and another flag. Thrown by the line judge. Let's see what that is. The extra point had crossed over and the flag came out. They're having a long discussion about it. The extra point is good. Unsportsmanlike conduct. On there were no Dragon players by the head linesman when that penalty was called. Yeah, I, I didn't. So it's a good PAT, and the kickoff will come from the Dragon 45. It, th these must be, you know, verbal penalties, because I didn't see anything on that point no. after to warrant a, a flag. Yeah. I, I was looking down where the head linesman was, and there were no players there. Right. Yeah, that was a bizarre one. So number 94, Ryan Krauthammer will kick off. 
He approaches, puts the left foot into it. Kind of a line drive into the end zone where it'll come out first and 10 to the 20. But Doug, this Lake Orion offense appears to have figured something out. You feel a lot better now than you did going into the halftime break. You do, and, and I don't know if Coach Blackstock got a satisfactory explanation as to what happened on the personal fouls or not. So first and 10 for the Dragons from their own 20. Tight formation, two backs in the backfield. Kyler on the keeper. Over to 25 to the 26 or 27. Gain of seven. It'll be second down and they're calling it four. Now they changed it to second down and three. Now they have twins left. Robeson up the middle, picks up the first down at the 30. So they'll move the chains. It'll be first and 10 for the Dragons. Very methodical, get your yardage, get the first down when you can. This offensive line doing a nice job here. Three seniors there, Daniel Babcock, Jonah Fix, Trevor Witt. And it's nice to get Daniel Babcock back too. He was out last week. Yes. So first and 10. Around the right side goes number 26, Ray Payne. He's out to the 38 yard line. And again, yardage in chunks. It'll be second and two, which as we said, opens your playbook wide open. Opportunity to do whatever you'd like right here with this play. So second and two, up the middle. Roberson up the middle, enough for the first down. They'll move the chains again out to the 43 yard line. 320 to go here in the third. We're, it's 21-14 West Bloomfield. Roberson <coughs> comes out for a rest. Nick Eaton comes in at the tailback position for the Dragons. Handoff outside. Wellman out to the 40 of West Bloomfield. Jack Wellman on the sweep. That's what Jack Wellman brings to this offense and Billy Roberson, when he came off, appeared like he was hobbling a bit, a situation we'll keep an eye on and keep you informed. Yeah, he's walking around pretty good out there now. So Eaton and Stephen Brown are the backs. Toss back Stephen Brown. Over the 35, down to the 34. See what we got. We got a stoppage in play. Trevor Witt, number 55, the left tackle was slow to get up, but he's up now. Looks like he's fine. There is a whistle on the field. West Bloomfield. And West Bloomfield's going to take a timeout with 221, probably just to get their breath back. We will remind you again of the Wildwood Film Festival. Filmmakers, be ready. The Wildwood Film Festival will be kicking off on Thursday, October 7th at the ONTV studio located at 1349 Joslin Road. Teams will be given their requirements, which include a prop, location, and line of dialogue that is to be included in their film. 
you will have until 6 p.m. Tuesday, October 12th, to submit the film. On Wednesday the 13th, the films will be viewed and judged at 7 p.m. at the Oxford 7 Cinema in Oxford. Open to all ages, it costs $25 per team, and three winners will be chosen for cash prizes. The contest, contest benefits the LOHS Students Offering Support Program, and we'll finish Kyler from a pistol. Drops, back, looks, goes deep. Has him. Pass interference, there we Pass go. Pass interference. He had Raymond Payne, and it looked like number six, Corey Garrison, ran into him. No, it was number five. That was Dylan Tatum ran into him. So we could put that. Two four eight three nine three one zero six zero, or go to www.orionontv.org. The flag indeed was for pass interference. Carson underthrew Payne there, and it was a blessing in disguise. It worked out. So it's first and ten from the twenty-five. should be from the 20-yard line. Having a little discussion here. I don't think they marked this penalty off correctly. Should be five more yards, I believe. And they are. They're going to move it up another five. Good call, Teddy. So now the ball is placed at the 19 where it's first and 10, Dragons down seven. Roberson, Roberson up the middle. Harrison. Gets maybe a yard, maybe two. It'll be second down as we go with inside two minutes here in the third. And yeah, Roberson back in there looks fine when he was hobbling off. Might have just been a stinger or something. Should be good to go for the final 14 minutes of this game. Raymond Payne sets up on a wing left. Dorian Hills wide left. Kyler rolling, looking, got pressure, throws it away. Going to be intentional there grounding. There was nobody. They're going to talk it over. Was there an eligible receiver in the area, and did the football no. reach the line of there scrimmage? There was not, and they called intentional grounding against the yeah. Dragons. It's a That'll loss be loss of, loss of down. And they'll back it up, too. And that's a spot foul. Right. That's a big penalty. Third down, and... So the ball is now marked on the 41. Third and 32. It is third down and an acre. Stephen Brown comes in at a running back. Billy Roberson in at a running back. Dorian Hill, Raymond Payne in at wide receivers. Kyler Carson under center. Looks, throws deep. Almost had it, Dorian Hill. And he had West Bloomfield Lakers in his face. Again, there was triple coverage around him, and he had Dylan Tatum right with him step for step. Carson hasn't backed down from Tatum. He's he's thrown at him all night. So it's fourth and 32. Offense staying out there. This could be a Carson pooch punt we've seen a few times this Offense year. Offense is staying out. Naz Lardell comes out, sets up on a wing right. The West Bloom. The West Bloomfield coaches next to us were going nuts, yelling he's going to kick it. And I think they were right. And we're gonna have another five yard walk off. 
now it'll be fourth down. At this point, you might be better off just sending Zach Jones out there. Yep. There's the pooch kick. Down. Died on the one. Let's see where now they're calling the touchback. Almost a great kick by Carson. I'll tell you what, number 20, Caleb Jones got down there. The ball hit on the one, bounced straight up, and he tried to knock it back into field play and just came in over the goal line. Yeah, Caleb Jones, only a junior, I think could possibly be a starting safety for this team in 2022. So it's going to be first and 10 for West Bloomfield at the 20, 108 to go here in the third. They're up by seven, 21 to 14. It's been a good football game. It tonight. has been a great night, Doug. Nance. On the keeper, tosses it back. Morgan, look Morgan's out. Morgan's got room. He's over midfield, down to 40. He loves that left sideline. They're going to call him out at the 35-yard line of Lake Orient. Little RPO, run pass option look from the Lakers there. Nance looked like he was going to tuck it, threw it to Morgan at the last second, picked up a huge chunk of yardage. A 45-yard run by Samaj Morgan. So first and 10, handoff, Tatum gets about three. 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. And you know, Dylan Tatum's had a good night tonight, but the star running back of the night has been Morgan. He's had, he's knocked off two of those long runs. Yeah, West Bloomfield's just gonna let the quarter expire. We've played three. The Lake Orion Dragons, 14, trail. The 21 point West Bloomfield Lakers. The fourth quarter of tonight's game is underwritten by Legacy 925. Located at 925 North Lapeer Road in Oxford, Legacy 925 is your one stop shop for family fun, providing dining, music, entertainment, go karts, trampolines, and so much more. To find out more, visit their website at thelegacy925.com or call 248-292-8458. So this becomes a very important quarter for the Dragons. They gotta hold them on this drive and come back with another score. Yeah, third quarter was the best 12 minutes of the night for Lake Orion. And a note to our fans, our viewers and listeners, Chris Bell, our athletic director, just went out there and fixed the referee's microphone so he can announce the numbers on the penalties. That'll help us out as we finish tonight's thrilling game. Chris Bell does it all. He does. Well, you're right, Doug. This drive right here is huge. And Coach Blackstock is out having a talk with referee Nick Meyer. Think related to those unsportsmanlike conduct penalties? Could be. Yeah. We'll be talking to Coach Blackstock after the game. By the way, Joe Johnson is on vacation, so Jalen Horn is handling the sideline camera tonight. Second and seven for West Bloomfield. Tatum up the middle, cuts. Makes some, one tackler miss, gets down to the 10, and is brought down by number 20, Caleb Jones. You hear the phrase, cutting on a dime. Dylan Tatum just showed you it right there. Nice run, put that foot in the ground, broke right. Tatum again, up inside the five to the two. 
I think they're just going to keep riding Tatum here. It's going to be a touchdown. I'd be surprised if the play call was for anyone else. Second goal from the three. So second and goal. They've got it marked on the three. Tatum is the Wildcat quarterback. Tatum did it on the Wildcat, takes it in for the touchdown. We've, we've seen him do that as we saw Donovan Edwards before him. It is a staple of the West Bloomfield offense. Running that Wildcat and having the, your feature back take the snap, go right up the middle. Hey, you have your playmakers, your premier athletes, put the football in their hands any way you can. That's why they're there. So Krauthammer on for the extra point. Ball is up and the kick is good. 11.07 to go here in the fourth quarter. It's now West Bloomfield 28, Lake Orion. 14, and we will remind you again, tonight's game is a copyrighted presentation of Lake Orion High School's Dragon Broadcasting Program and Orion Neighborhood Television. In 2019, the LOH Broadcast Program was awarded the title of Best Overall Program in the Country. We brought you over 80 live sporting events, and we plan to match that again this year. Plus, you can catch our award-winning daily live newscast, L-O-A-M. Tune in to www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Jack Wellman, Stephen Brown, and Dorian Hill drop back deep for the Dragons. Krauthammer will kick it off. High short kick. Taken by Stephen Brown. Had a little seam and it closed up early. Brought it out to the 35 yard line where the Dragons will take over first and 10. Well, in some respects, it feels like we're right back to where we were. It was 14 nothing at half and now it's 28 14. This offense looks like they've put something together. The last drive was derailed by that intentional grounding, so stay ahead of the stick, stay on schedule, and you have 11 minutes and one second left. Plenty of time. Kyler spent a lot of time under center tonight. Handoff, up the middle. I believe that was Roberson. It was. Roberson on the carry. Gets about four. It'll be second and six. Stephen Brown sets up on a wing right. Handoff, Stephen Brown trying to break it outside and does and gets run into by Dylan Tatum. If it was number 20, Jameer Benjamin that caught Tatum or caught Brown and then Tatum came in and finished and it off. So third down and five. The, they say the ball's marked on the 39, but the nose is touching the 40. 36. Yeah, it, it looks closer to the 40, I agree. It does. Roberson gets jammed up, squirts forward for a couple more yards, and he'll be down two, two yards short of the first. 9.45 to play, and go for it. You here. might as well go for it. You're down 14, you need a score. You've pretty much been able to move the ball tonight against this West Bloomfield defense. Right, especially in the second half. You've been running the football effectively, pick up two so yards. Fourth and two. Stephen Brown on a wing right, Dorian Hill split left, Brown in motion, 
First down, Roberson. Ran it right up the gut, got over the 45, and they're gonna mark him down at the 48 yard line. Billy Good Ro run on third down. Billy Roberson's best game since that season opener. He's coming into his own tonight as a sophomore, getting a taste of high level OAA football. First and 10. Up the middle again for about three or four. They're gonna give him four for Roberson. Now they back it up a yard. It's right over midfield at the 49 yard line of West Bloomfield, where it'll be second and seven with 8.20 to go in the game. You wonder if and when Lake Orion's gonna look to take that deep shot in the passing game, kind of lull West Bloomfield to sleep with all these runs out of the, the double wing and eventually take that shot deep. We'll see. Well, they've tried in the speed of that West Bloomfield secondary. And Kyler rolled back and number 24, Bryce Rowe was there waiting for him. He got penetration and just stood still and waited for Kyler to come to him. And Kyler's got a little hitch in, get, hitch in his get along. A little hitch in the giddy up. It'll be third down and nine. Stephen Brown set up in a slot right. Kyler looks, throws, caught, complete, got open field. To number two, Andrew Horton. Oh, CJ Witt. CJ Witt. Leading receiver for this team and one of his biggest catches of the year right there. First down, Dragons. That was a huge catch. So now first and 10, he tried to cut it upfield and it looked like he had had more green turf in front of him, but it closed down quickly. Now Hills. Getting to the point now, you gotta keep an eye on the clock. With Dorian Hill. Toss back Stephen Brown. Run out of bounds just short of the first down. They're gonna mark him about two yards short. Raymond Payne coming in for C.J. Witt. So it's second and two. Second down and two. Ball's marked on the 19. Dragons have all three of their timeouts left. West Bloomfield has two. Handoff up the middle for maybe a yard goes Roberson. So now it's third. They called it no gain, so it'll be third and two. Third and two. Let's see what the Dragons can dial up. Looks like Roberson splits out a little more this time. Comes out as a blocker. C.J. Witt trying to turn the corner. I don't think he got there. He did not. Raymond, Raymond Payne did not get the line to gain. That was Raymond Payne? Okay. Fourth down, but... It looked like they almost horse collared him, but they just... They did grab him up by the neck area. If you look where his shoulder pad is, it's fourth and one. The Dragons are going to go for it. Kyler right up the middle. He picked up the first down. First down, Dragons. 5.14 to go. Let's give that offensive line some credit. They put that surge in there against a very big West Bloomfield defensive line. It was one of your keys to the game, Doug. We win the battle in the trenches in the second half like Orion is. Up the middle, cuts the side, Roberson, touchdown, second of the game. 
Touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons, Billy Roberson. Second of the game, third of the season, 16 yards out, and we have a one-score game with 4.57 to play on ONTV. I know after the last three weeks, people might have been down on this team. I don't doubt at times they were down on themselves, but they have played a very inspired football game tonight. You have, you know, you have a three game losing streak. You have West Bloomfield coming in. Sometimes playing a team like this can bring out the best in you. And we're seeing that tonight. They've answered the challenge. Jacob Lee makes the extra point. Seven point game, 28-21. 28-21, Dragons, we got a ball game. Thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 a month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the Lake Orion High School program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bringing Dragon Sports to the world. And again, no matter where in the world you're watching us, glad you're with us. You're, you're seeing a good football game this beautiful Friday night. Good old fashioned barn burner. Zach Jones to kick it away. Oh. Onside, Onside kick. kick. That didn't go 10 yards. So they're going to have a conference. The Dragons did the same thing. It's going to be West Bloomfield's ball at the Dragon 49-yard line. The Dragons did the same thing West Bloomfield did, try to wall them off until the ball crossed yeah. over the 50-yard line, just and it just didn't do it. One more yard, that's all we needed. Twins left, single wide right. Two backs in the backfield. Nance from the gun. He's going to keep it. Shakes and bakes. Gets over the 45 down to the 42. Excuse me, the 42. And, and, they're, and it'll be second down. They're calling it the 42 and a half. Now they moved it back to the 43. And don't forget about the issues West Bloomfield has had snapping the football all night. They continue yes. to operate out of the pistol. Dylan Tatum is the back alongside Nance, who for a sophomore has played very well tonight. He has. Tatum on the run. Brought down at the 39 it'll be third down and two for west bloomfield as we cross the four minute mark in the game west bloomfield will continue to run that play clock down inside of 10 seconds inside of five seconds try to force lake orion to start thinking about using these timeouts they I have think, all three of them i think if you see nance throw the ball he's going to have to walk home <laughs> so third and two. And Lake Orion is going to call timeout. 3.31 to go. It's currently West Bloomfield 28 and the Dragons 21. You can go mobile with ONTV anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with ONTV to see what's happening in our studio, see upcoming events, and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand. ONTV, working to bring Lake Orion to the world.
So here's our situation. West Bloomfield has a third down and two on the Dragon 41 yard line. Tight formation. Nance on the keeper, cuts it outside, he's not going to get there. Brought down for no gain, everybody's in on that. Naz Lardell, C.J. Witt, Lake Orion's going to call timeout, that's their second. And be sure to tune in to replays of your favorite games like this one right here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, visit our YouTube link for games on demand, www.orionontv.org. Fourth down and two for West Bloomfield. From the gun. Tatum. Tatum, out of that Wildcat formation, he took the direct snap and picked up the first down. Down to the 36, it'll be first and 10 with 310 to go in the game. West Bloomfield's gonna milk that clock. They can see the uh, play clock at the north end of the end zone. Lake Orion down to one timeout left. So they set up at 10 and they'll snap about at five or four. Hand off, up the middle. Kenneth Jones the second, the third, I'm sorry, I just. Kenneth Jones the second is probably in those visiting yeah, stands. Yeah, I just gave his dad a carry <laughs> for the night. Hey, he'll probably take it, yeah. So Lake Orion burns their third and final timeout. We're down to 2.31 to go in the game. West Bloomfield is up 28-21. And the Lakers have a second down and eight from the Dragon 34-yard line. And... You have to say it that the return of Joey Thede and Ethan Strand have made a difference in this Dragon defense. I know it's always next man up, but as we said earlier, Joey Thede has been a man amongst boys this year. He has. Those are a couple of your seniors, your leaders, and you can see the difference. Allowing 45 points per game over their last three, only 28 tonight so far. So second and eight. Twenty-five second clock just started after the five uh, after the timeout. Yeah, game clock not running right now. Still at two thirty-one. Tatum on the toss tries to cut it outside, gets a couple extra yards, and is ridden out at the thirty-yard line. And we had a flag come in as well. Judah Kinney ran him out with a little help from Jake McCoy. We could get a hold or something here. Let's check the penalty. A face oh, mask no. against the Dragons. We didn't need that. So that'll take the ball down to the 17 yard line It'll be first and 10 with 2.24 to go. 
Unfortunately, that's one of the storylines from this game. The three unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, a face mask, roughing the passer and roughing the kicker. Penalty yardage. Nance drops the, drops the ball. Tatum picks it up and gets about five or six. The ball went to Nance and dropped, came right off his fingers. And Tatum was right there to pick it up. Fortuitous bounce for sure. Like dribbling a basketball, it just came straight up to him. Inside two minutes to go. Second and four from the 11 for West Bloomfield. They can take the game clock down to about 134 by the next time they have to snap it. And West Bloomfield came in with an excellent game plan tonight, too. What helped were a couple big runs. In the kick return by Samaj up Morgan. Up the middle. Morgan on the kick return. Morgan had a long run down the left sideline. So now they start the 42nd clock at about 117. So we'll be inside a minute when the ball is snapped. It'll probably be about 43, 44 seconds. First and goal from the eight. Dylan Tatum on the direct snap, takes it down to the five. With 40.2 seconds left, the clock is running and West Bloomfield doesn't have to snap the ball. That'll do it. And they're not going to. A gallant effort by the Lake Orion Dragons tonight against a heavily favored West Bloomfield team the Dragons put on a show, but come up short 28-21. What an effort by the Dragons tonight. The final seconds tick off. And your final score, the West Bloomfield Lakers 28, the Lake Orion Dragons 21. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. We'll be right back. Down on the field after a 28-21 loss to the West Bloomfield Lakers with head coach John Blackstock. And coach, there are no moral victories. No, sir. But your team played very well tonight. Uh, thank you. And, uh, you know, I just told them I'm proud to be their coach. Uh, I, the way they came out and have dealt with the adversity that we've gone through, you know, being one and three, having a really good week of practice, especially with all the weather changes and the weather adjustments. And all we asked them to do was come out and play the best game that they've played, and, and they did. Um, you know, and I, I think it shows that we're right there. You know, even at halftime, we said, looking at the film on the sideline, like, ah, we're so close. We're one guy away on each play, you know, and uh, it, we're getting there. You know, it, I think that people don't realize, you know, that how, how inexperienced we are. Now that can't be an excuse anymore now that we're halfway through the season. Well, there's a defense that returned three guys last year, an offense that returned four. You know, there's four sophomores up, a freshman. Our seniors are battling their tails off. The juniors are doing a great job of learning. Just really proud of their effort tonight. Yeah. Coach, you kind of started to, to touch on it there. You had the young offense, and, you know, you guys have been kind of flipping back and forth between a couple different yep. offenses yep. all season. And after struggling through the first half tonight, watching to me, it seemed like a light bulb went off in that second half. You had three scoring drives and the one that wasn't was you know derailed by an intentional grounding penalty you think tonight could be a turning point for that offense where it's we can do it yeah, and we know I, how it can be done absolutely 100 percent. i think it's kind of the tipping point for us of we have been searching you're exactly right for our identity offensively you know um 
you know, and we just we said at halftime, hey, let's just go back to just some. We're a wing T team, yeah. right? So let's just go back to some old school wing T, you know, belly and and uh, some veer, some midline and. Uh, drawing things on the board we just we knew we had it schematically and the kids came out and executed it greatly in the second half the one thing that really deterred from this was the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties sure a roughing the passer penalty yep. that sort of thing yeah what happened yeah you know some of those are just uh, you know there we can't have them right i mean 15 yard penalties hurt uh, one was on me, you know, I, I, I know that uh, for, for talking on the sideline because I was really frustrated with some things that were going on. Um, but uh, sometimes those things are just playing hard, you know, and a kid just takes it, you know, an extra step or two steps and you're in the moment and you can't stop. And um, we'll, we'll talk about those and we definitely have to clean those up. The, the ones that really get me are when it's, you know, a personal foul for, you know, poor language. Yeah. Um, those are the ones that just cannot happen. Um, the last we heard, Clarkston was losing 17-14 to Adams. So we will send you off with that. Yeah, that's, Coach. that's a heck of a game right there, yeah. Clarkston and Adams. Those are two, two heavyweights. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised either way that thing turned out. Yeah. Coach, thank, thank you, you for your time. Yep. We'll see you next week Absolutely. against Stony Creek. Can't wait. All right. Thank Thanks, you. John. Stay green. Go Dragons. Yes. So that about wraps it up from the field. Uh, Teddy, thank you for sitting in tonight. You did a great job for our entire Orion Neighborhood television crew. Joey Tysick out in the van. I'm Doug Corliss. Thank you for watching. Good night, everyone.